Dolphins have been known to play with themselves by wrapping live wriggling eels around their dolphin doorknobs. Oh, you know it gets worse. Dolphins will also divorce a fish's head from its body and then use the disembodied fish head as a fish light. There's videos. I'm not gonna show you, but they're there. Dolphins can catch feelings for humans to the point where they get jealous. What? In 1994, a man got vibe checked so badly by a dolphin that he ended up dying of internal hemorrhaging. Damn! Reason, the dolphin saw him around some women that he liked and felt some type of way. The man broke his heart, so the dolphin broke his ribs and then punctured his lung for good measure. In oh 1965, Margaret Lowe was part of an experiment where we tried to teach dolphins English, and to get her dolphin to focus, she would, uh... She, uh... The dolphin didn't apply, but he got a job. The experiment was cut short because it turns out unless it's shooting oil, playing tug of war with a dolphin's baby leg in a government-funded experiment is it's not what's that called? What's that? What's it? What's it? What's it called? What's it called? B B bestiality, right? Ew, you nasty, you nasty crook. Terrible career move. After that, the dolphin got depressed and unsubscribed from life. Yes, capital S with a side at the end. Workers at a Florida research center smiled as they watched a bunch of dolphins play volleyball and then stopped smiling when they realized they were just smacking around a baby shark to the point where they had to go in and rescue it. Male dolphins will form gangs, kidnap a female, and hold her hostage, and then proceed to run through her like a track meet in violent choo-choo parties that can last weeks. And these water wines things will tail smack her to keep her in line, and if she tries to escape, they'll just chase her down. Dolphins only exist to serve the will of Satan. You say what you will about sharks, but Jaws would never. Okay, so I wasn't gonna talk about this, but Hank brought it up, so... I'm not responsible. Hi, the children, this is the only warning you finna get. Okay, so I'm pretty sure the blowhole thing he's talking about is this godforsaken what the f right here. So the fact here is that Amazon dolphins are believed to have, uh, I'm gonna call it bowling. These dolphins are believed to participate in gay bowling matches, but instead of a lane, it goes down their blowhole. Now, in case you're confused about how dolphins, you know, dolphin, they kinda need that to breathe. So this is basically like taking one up the nostril and then feeling it in your lungs like Cali Green. And considering dolphins who use live eels and decapitated fish heads as toys, I had no problem believing this. However, I was researching this because that's what my life has become, and I read that a dolphin research associate has said that he had never seen a dolphin violate another's blowhole like this. Also, fun fact, dolphins can't breathe through their mouth the way we can. So doing it at the blowhole would be like you holding your breath the next time you go bowling. Especially if since water starts rushing in, the dolphin could end up drowning. So yeah, I don't- Dolphins can't breathe like we can? They got a big ass mouth, what are you talking about? You can't use that, they can't use that to breathe? That's like humans only using one nostril to breathe. I'm, hold on. No. I mean, even though. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I could breathe. It wouldn't be my go-to to breathe like that. But I'm just saying. Like what if this what if what if the nostril gets gets like stuffed up? You know? It's right, you're dead. Oh, well, this is true. But my theory is that it doesn't happen often at all, but once in a while a dolphin will go bowling down the wrong lane. Also, since male dolphins will violate each other to assert dominance, I can promise you that whatever the hell this is, consent was sold separately. Also, if this has only ever happened once, it's already happened too often. Moral of this video, there is no safe way to explain my search history. Here's something about Spongebob you probably didn't know. But you know how they live underwater, yet there's a whole beach for no reason? We were all like, how is there water underwater? Well, there's actually such a thing as underwater lakes and rivers. In places like the oh, Gulf of Mexico, seawater will often rise through the thick layer of salt that you'll often find at the seafloor. The rising water dissolves the salt layer, causing it to collapse all while forming a depression. And of course, the dissolved salt makes the water in the depression denser than the seawater surrounding it, which is how you can end up with a river or a lake in the ocean. Some of these underwater rivers can actually be a few miles long. And underwater rivers, which are really just a mixture of salt water and hydrogen sulfide, behave and flow as normal rivers. Now here's where I f*** you up. These underwater brine pools are three to eight times saltier than the seawater around it, which is why animals like this eel that get too close can end up getting toxic shock while getting trapped inside. So in a weird way, it's actually possible for underwater animals to drown inside these brine pools. This eel got lucky, but normally most animals that mess around and get that close don't come out alive. Moral of this video, Hillensburg was a genius. And just because of this comment, I'm finna y'all up. 
First of all, this is a giant Pacific octopus, and yes, they can weigh up to 600 pounds. That's more than two washing machines and heavy enough to get a show on TLC. Also, octopus have no bones at all, and they don't have any air bladders or gas pockets, which is how they can survive being at the bottom of the ocean without the water pressure turning them into a chalk outline. If you tried to live with an octopus, you'd become an instapack because your lungs would fill with blood and collapse as your body literally folds on itself. And fun fact, actually mildly disturbing fact, look at your door. No, seriously, look. An octopus that weighs the same as two shacks could fit under your door and crawl into your room. Since they don't have bones or bladders to hold them back, a several hundred pound octopus could fit through a passageway not that much bigger than a quarter. Now obviously not all octopus tip the scales at 600 pounds, but all octopus can fit through things that your mental health probably isn't prepared for. That- Oh my god! Damn! <laughs> I just got chills fact that octopus are probably the smartest things in the world that don't have a spine is how octopus can escape anything that wasn't built with them in mind. It's how Inky the octopus escaped an aquarium and it was never heard from again. It's also how this next video exists and you're welcome in advance. Oh my god. Oh shit. I'm not doing this alone. What's up, dude? Yo, so there's this video going around TikTok and everyone expects me to address it. I mean, your face isn't in it, so just say you're a hack. What? No, 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 not that video. Oh, oh no. Not like the weird ass ocean demon thing. People want to know what it is, and I am not strong enough to handle it alone. I mean, it's definitely some sort of primate with the four facing eyes like that. I can see how people think it's a weird human demon thing because it doesn't have any fur. See, now that's what I thought. I figured with the skull structure and the canine teeth, whatever it is, or was it's probably an omnivore that just ate whatever it felt like kind of like us and he said it was found on the coast of panama right yeah it was in like play of the now in panama also it had these long lanky arms that was like almost too long for itself like like kevin durant arms on a kevin hart body i mean it's hard to tell because it's so washed up but okay primate on the coast of panama and super long legs hmm okay hear me out it's gotta be like a spider monkey or something, right? I mean, that only oh. makes sense. Or oh. maybe a howler monkey, and it's super bloated, so it probably got cocky, went in the water, and drowned. It'd be like that. And now it's the second ugliest thing in the ocean. Well, what's the first? I'm gonna let that one slide. Peace out. All right, good looks. Wait, what video did you think I was talking about? There are some things you've probably never seen before. This isn't Photoshop. This is an actual pink manta ray. It was recorded swimming in the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of Queensland, Australia. And apparently this pink UFO is the only known one in the entire world. And we don't really know why this thing exists. Like, some believe it gets its color from its diet the same way flamingos do. But if that were true, then you'd wonder why we haven't found more of them. But the best guess is that it's caused by a mutation that affects pigments. Plus, some things in Australia just don't need an explanation, because being in Australia is the explanation. A yellow penguin. This is a king penguin, and just for reference, that is what they're supposed to look like. But it's believed that this blonde bird is leucistic. And leucism mean this penguin doesn't have the melanin needed to grow black feathers. And in the colony of more than 100,000 other penguins, this was the only blondie. And normally standing out that much is a great way to end the day as a seal's chew toy. That being said, she seems to be doing alright for herself. A completely white moose. This bull moose went viral in Sweden for being whiter than the Brady Bunch. And like the penguin, this Caucasian tank is leucistic, not albino. A big difference is an albino would have pink eyes, but this moose has brown. And normally wearing white in the woods is like wearing a target on your back while walking through a shooting range. But in a lot of places, the white moose are protected by law. The MOC is they can go themselves. Fun fact, in Canada, it's illegal to take the life of a moose that's more than 50% white in color. You can be 7 feet tall with antlers and body odor and still have white privilege. Now, ain't that a b Here are some more things that you've probably never seen before. Yes, that is a polka dot zebra. It was first seen in 2019 in Kenya when it was just a baby, and apparently it's the first of its kind to ever get caught on camera. The reason for this Klondike horse is because of pseudomelanism, which causes dark spots and stripes to cover most of an animal's body. And it's called pseudomelanism because this is what full-on melanism looks like. Zebras like this are so rare because without normal stripes, it's easier for them to get picked off by predators and they're more vulnerable to disease-causing flies. That being said, to my knowledge, it's still alive. Her name is Tira, and there she is with her mama. A white giraffe, aka proof that shiny Pokemon really do be out here. And just like the other animals, this giraffe has leucism, which causes it to lose most of its skin pigmentation. And because we simply refuse to have nice things, most Caucasian giraffes end up getting turned into trophies by poachers. You can tell a lot about a man by the animals he kills. The bigger and more rare the animal, the more likely he buys jock straps from Baby Gap. 
but it's not all bad. To keep this Snow White giraffe alive, Rangers put a GPS tracking device on him so they could always watch over him. And now we have this snake right here. This is a piebald python, and piebald is when an animal has patterns of unpigmented spots on pigmented hair or skin, or in this case, scales. An example would be this equality symbol of a horse, since the white parts are the unpigmented sections. If it helps you remember, the word piebald is because the white patches of skin or scales are considered the bald part. And you can actually own one since people started breeding piebald pythons as pets. I have no idea how long it took me to say that sentence. If you know <laughs> someone that hates snakes, show them this baby piebald and watch how fast they fold. I can personally guarantee you it's cuter than any snake you've ever dated. According to zookeepers, here are the animals you actually have to worry about. Zebras are fundamentally problematic, and they cause as many injuries to zookeepers as any other animal. They're not just horses from Africa, they're Oreo donkeys that share an area code with lions, leopards, and hyenas. All that generational trauma has made zebras aggressive, stubborn, and worst of all, unpredictable. If a 900 pound male zebra has a temper tantrum, one kick can shatter your ribs and one bite can destroy nerves in your hand. Damn! Yeah, there's a reason we can ride horses but not zebras. Ant eaters are dangerous for the simple fact that they're blind. Ant eaters are legally blind, and unless you're right in its face, it won't recognize you, and if you're just close enough, it can barely make out fuzzy images. But being blind in the same neighborhood as jaguars breeds trust issues, which is why if the ant eater feels even slightly threatened, they will swing on you. Those hooked claws can easily tear through your arm, and if they manage to cut one of your arteries, it's up for you. One zookeeper in Argentina got put on the news after a giant ant eater slashed her stomach open and she bled out. Woo! They don't play. Woo! This is not a joke. It's because monkeys like tamarins are cute. So cute that some people forget that they have razor sharp teeth that can break skin. That and the fact that people are dumb enough to stick their fingers in cages. Why, if you ask which animal sent the most people to the hospital in the Jersey Wildlife Trust, you'll see this ginger monkey's mugshot. What's a hill that you're willing to die on a thousand percent of the time? Zebras are black with white stripes and nobody ever believes me when I say it. I already know what you're going to say before you say it, but hear me out. Their stomachs might be white, but that's just their fur. If you shave a zebra completely, their skin will be black. And if you think I'm lying, one of the only parts of a zebra without fur is its snout, and it's black enough to get a pass. But if you really want me to be a nerd about it, zebra fur grows from follicles that have melanocyte cells, which gives them their color. But the white part of a zebra's fur is where the melanocytes are deactivating, meaning it's only white because there aren't any pigments. Which means a zebra's default color is actually black. Which means this biracial donkey, which isn't a joke by the way, zebras are closer to wild donkeys than actual horses, just saying. The Oreo donkey's actually black, but with white stripes. But honestly, I didn't even need to make this video. This one was voiced by Chris Rock. That's literally all the proof I needed. I know it's a small hill, but I'll still die on it. It's how he ends his videos for me. Um. Okay. Hold on. Squids. I'm looking at squids differently now. Not they can squeeze in almost any hole, any space. That's that's scary if you really think about it. Like, look at your... I do it. I did it in the video. But like, look at your door. What is that? Look at your door. Now look at the space between the floor and the bottom of your door. A squid can fit that. That's crazy as hell. Jesus. These are some like weird animals. But this one? What? I can't hear nothing. Oh, wow. Okay, got it. This? Nobody ever believe. Hold on, hold on. Uh. At least, and they will swing on you. Those hooked claws can easily tear through your arm, and if they manage to cut one of your arteries, it's up for you. One zookeeper in Argentina got put on the news after a giant ant eater slashed her stomach open and she bled out. Ridiculous. I can't slight a fuck. Ugh. I can't even picture, I do not want to picture somebody getting sliced open and you're bleeding out. You feel all of that pain until you die. That's ridiculous. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Je oh, my God. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.